joined right now by an old friend of mine, Angelo Leo. How you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Just getting ready for my fight, January 27th. Still undefeated in the boxing ring, now living and training out in Las Vegas. Tell us about the move. Uh, you know, we just, um, me and my dad decided to move to Vegas because Albuquerque, we weren't getting too much fights. And, um, and here we are now, signed to Mayweather Promotions. So where did you go right when you got to Vegas? Did you go right to the Mayweather gym? Uh, yes, yes we did. We looked around a few, a few other places. But for the most part, um, we uh, stopped at Mayweather's first. So what was that like when you got into town, that that first off experience and getting acclimated to the scene, stepping in the gym in those first couple days? What was that like? Um, it was a little different, but um, nothing new to me. Uh, we've done this in L.A. too, going to different gyms, and, uh, and <clears throat> we always come prepared. And um, sure enough, they, they brought us some, somebody to spar to see what I got. And um, over a few a few months, uh, they um, they liked my style. Uh, I caught the eye of uh, Floyd Mayweather, and uh, from then on, it was um, the rest is history. So I've seen some of the videos online of like <clears throat> dog fights and stuff like that. Was that one of the things you went through when you first stepped in there? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, one of the times when Mayweather was there. I had to experience the doghouse where they cut the time. They uh, they cut the time off the the timer, and we just uh, me and my sparring partner just went at it for a few more few more minutes. So how long did you guys go? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. It was probably an extra round. I, I'm thinking with no break. <laughs> it's pretty tough though. And what has Vegas just been like getting ready to live there? Because when I heard you were leaving Albuquerque, I kind of expected that would just mean you guys were going back to California, is that it seemed to be your second home anyway. Right, right. So um, what what has it been like just getting used to living in Vegas, that the desert out there? It, it's been nice. It's, it's it's really nice. It's very similar to Albuquerque, except we got the strip over here. And, um, you know, it's not too much different than Albuquerque. So are you starting to enjoy the nightlife, or are you still staying out of trouble? Uh, I, stay, I always stay out of trouble, you know. <laughs> but is it just a different kind of nightlife, a different a different city? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a, like they say, it's a city that never sleeps, so things are open later. Um, when I first got there, I got a job, um, and it was I was working till 2, 3 in the morning, getting off at 2, 3 in the morning, so... Um, you know, I got kind of, ac my body got kind of acclimated to staying up late, but, uh, you know, as, as I'm starting to get more fights now, now I'm starting to go to bed earlier and waking up earlier. Are you still working now full time too? Uh, I just work part time. Now on that, for where I was going a moment ago, was there a thought when you guys were talking about leaving Albuquerque to push your career forward was it a thought between california and las vegas or were you guys pretty set on las vegas it was pretty we were pretty set on las vegas the reason why is because la is only you know four or four, four hours away so you know we have la right there we got phoenix not too far and then albuquerque's a little closer to us than la was so you know it, it's kind of we're kind of in the middle of things so that's what we like. That's why we picked Vegas. And, um, you know, the living expenses in L.A. are pretty high. So Vegas is a little bit more affordable. That's why we also chose Vegas. And now being at the Mayweather gym, is your father still your head coach? Yes, that's correct. My dad's still my head coach. And Luis Chavez is still in my corner as well. We also got some other, um, some other people from the Mayweather gym that's also joined the team. And they help out with the wraps. They also help out with um, strength and conditioning, things like that. So what What else, what's the differences now in training now that you're out there than what you guys were doing here? Um, it's just a lot more sparring over here than it was over there in Albuquerque. We got a lot more sparring, um, different looks. Um, I'm doing a lot more strength and conditioning over here. Uh, matter of fact, they put me on the they put me on the Floyd Mayweather regimen where 
all the strength and conditioning exercises he does, exercises he does, I do. So, you know, I'm feeling really strong these days. You, when did you make the move, actually? How long have you been out there for now? Uh, we made the move in late March of last year. So, was it before the Jorge Fal- uh, Falcone fight or after? That was uh, after. After. And then you had yeah, the... After, the, after the, the Jorge Falcone fight, we, uh, two weeks... Two weeks after that fight, we went to Vegas just to scout out the scene to see um, if we liked it or not. And I know we went to the Mayweather gym and we just checked it out. And uh, me and my dad decided at that point that we wanted to move to Vegas. Yeah, in 2016, you fought all all three times that you fought in Mexico. So was it around that year that you guys started talking about we need to make a change, we're not really staying active in Albuquerque? Exactly. Yeah, it was right after my Falcone fight, and um, I think that August, that uh, late August, we decided to go over here and check it out. And, and from that point on, you know, me and my dad decided that, you know, it's time to to move out of Albuquerque and look for a better opportunity out here and uh, elsewhere. And it took nearly 15 months for you to get a fight. Was there any frustration, or what was it like then those first couple months in Vegas? It was, um, it was good, you know, it was, I'm not going to say I wasn't frustrated, but at the same time, you know, I'm always, I'm always, um, you know, always looking at the good parts, you know, looking at, uh, the positive, the positive side. And I was not, I was, I knew I was getting exposure. I knew I was, uh, you know, a lot of people were talking about me and, um, and it was just a matter of time till Floyd Mayweather uh, decided to sign me. Do you feel everything came together in the way it should have? Yeah, exactly. I felt I felt like everything meshed together perfectly, and all the hard work I did in 2017 is now paying off in 2018. How hard was that doing the behind the scenes work to get yourself in this position? How hard was it to keep motivated? It was, um, you know, my main goal is to become a world champion, and that's, and I'll do whatever it takes to become that. So, you know, I just, I figured it was, it was part of, it was part of the plan. It was part of the goal. So I just went along with it. This last fight that you were in, Basilio Nieves. That was the step up that people were looking for. A guy with a winning record, nineteen fights under his belt. And only four of those were losses. That was the step. You won by knockout. What were your thoughts looking back on how that one played out and what you proved on that night? Um, my thoughts were it was just, um, you know, this was my it was, it was my debut for me with the promotions and I had to give a show and I had to impress. And that's exactly what I did. Did you feel pressure going in knowing having been signed, having had the layoff, the undefeated record, did you feel no, pressure? Not, not, not at all, because, you know, that whole, the whole 2017 of working in the Mayweather gym, you know, I really I really put into perspective what did I what I need to do once I get once I got signed. And that was always constant <clears throat> sorry. But that was always constantly on my mind is, you know, once I get signed it's it's my time to shine. And you know, I got the opportunity, and I seized it. Again, that was the step up in competition. Did it feel good to pass it with such flying colors to kind of hush some of those people? Because there's always the no, the naysayers that are like, well, so far he hasn't been tested. Well, that was a test, and he passed it with flying colors. Right, right. And, um, you know, and the next few fights are all going to be tests because uh, from what I've heard, these next opponents that I'm getting for January 27th are pretty tough and they do have winning records. So, you know, um, this is what I live for. This is what I signed up for and I'm ready to take on any tests I need to. So on the 27th, do we have an opponent in place yet or that's still being determined? Uh, it's still being determined at this point, but, uh, they got people in mind. So it's nothing new for you. That scenario though. No, not, not at all. 
What do you feel 2018 is going to be like for you, Angela? going to be like for you, Angela? Mm, I say 2018 is going to be a breakout year for me. Um, 2017 was the year of, of me just working hard and grinding and doing what I got to do to to be to to be exposed uh 2018 it's gonna be everything and that and um you know i'm just ready to take on whatever whatever i need to take on hopefully this uh year i could get a tv shot and i could be fighting on tv here pretty soon over the last year how many mind-blowing moments experiences have you had since making this move and i'm pretty sure there's a couple tell us about it uh, you said mind-blowing experiences? Yeah. Or surreal moments for yourself. That you're like, wow, I'm actually, this is actually my life. I'm actually doing this. What? What? Tell us about some of those. Mm, just living out here in Vegas, it's, it's been a little different. Um, you know, I got, I've got the opportunity to see Floyd Mayweather spar ringside. Um, and that was, that was a surreal moment, too. That was like... I was like, wow, I'm actually seeing one of the pound-for-pound pound champs sparring and fighting up and close. So that was pretty cool. Um, not too many people could say that, that they seen the champ uh, spar ringside. Have so you... that, was, that was pretty awesome. Um, and that's about it. You know, just experienced Vegas. It's, it's, Vegas has been real good to me. And... Uh, Everything is going good out here. I like it out here. Have you had a chance to uh, pick his brain at all? Have you had a conversation with Floyd? Um, I haven't. I haven't had a too much of a conversation, but we talked here and there, but nothing where I could pick his brain. <laughs> Have you done that with any of the guys that are more experienced that are in the gym? Um, hmm, I'm trying to think. Mm, not that I know of. Just I know a lot of uh. A lot of trainers, you know, all the trainers, they want to, they see me and they want to help me out. So that's the, mo that's the most thing that happens in the gym is all these trainers want to, they just want to put their advice and give me advice and all that. So that's pretty cool. I'm appreciative of that. So in the last year, really, I haven't seen you fight and it's been seeing you except for uh, on some Facebook footage when you're in Mexico. How much of a different fighter do you feel over the last two years? Over the last two years, I think I've I've grown more as a fighter. Um, I'm more experienced, more savvy. I uh, got more tricks under my sleeve, and that's for the most part. I'm stronger, you know. I'm um, I'm only getting stronger as the years progress. So, you know, I feel a lot more stronger. Um, everybody's saying I'm, I'm a lot more stronger, and um, you know, just a lot more wiser in the ring. The last four fights have all been knockouts. What are you attributing the these knockouts to? What am I attributing? Yeah. I'd say, um, you know, just uh, uh, my ability to set up punches. I think that's that, that's the main thing is my ability to set up, set up punches and uh, find openings. And then... Coming up on the twenty seventh, do you know where you are? Where you are on the card? Where I'm at, I think. Um, I think uh, I might be before before the co-main co-main or semi co-main co event because this round, this uh, fight, there was supposed to be an eight rounder, but now they switched to a six rounder. So I'm gonna be um, probably the fifth or sixth fight. All right, and then with the Mayweather Promotions events, are these where are these broadcasted on? Is it streamed or anything, or is it just a live audience? Uh, I think it's, this one's just gonna be a live audience. My last one was a, uh, it was a uh, streamed, <clears throat> it was streamed on. Um, no, no, it wasn't streamed. Uh, but the main event was on. It was on FS1, I believe. Oh, okay. It was one of the FS1 shows. Okay. Yeah, but I was I wasn't on I wasn't on a on TV, but hopefully here pretty soon I'll be on TV. So that's the biggest goal right now for 2018, getting a a TV showcase. Yeah, for the most part, yeah, yes, this is, and just racking up the wins and uh, building my record. Yeah, as you can see, uh, Mayweather Promotions is keeping me busy now, 
and uh, last fight was in November. Now my next fight, now my upcoming fight, next fight, now my upcoming fights in January. So you know, I'm pretty happy about that, and um, you know, everything is looking good. As we've known you, and I've known you since I think I was the first person that pulled you aside at your pro debut press conference and interviewed you. You're kind of a quiet guy. It's a little different, like when Mayweather Promotions has you taking over their Snapchat for a day. Uh, say, that, say that again? You've always been a quiet guy. Is it a little different for you handling a day like when Mayweather Promotions has you take over the Snapchat and they're following you around the whole day? Yeah, yeah it, it, it was cool. You know, it was cool. Um, it wasn't like nothing new to me. I'm always posting on Instagram my daily life and all that. So, you know, if just putting on Snapchat was just another another opportunity you've been doing the boxing thing for so long how have you felt you've embraced the becoming the entertainer and becoming you know popular entity side of it you know it's cool it's cool but um you know it comes with the territory and uh main thing i like to do is just box um that's that's my passion that's that's what i love to do so you know, it comes with the territory, uh, the fame, the um, the attention, that all comes with it. So, you know, uh, I take it for what it is. Um, I don't let it get to my head. And that's just what it is. January 27th in Las Vegas. He's back in action. Angelo Leo, thank you for the time, sir. All right. Thank you, Micah.